neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and it's time for a review of the second major label album by the meme enthusiast and extravagant star Oliver Tree. This one is called Cowboy Tears. It's the follow-up to his 2020 debut that saw so many songs flying out of virality, and it was an album that was also reissued multiple times, with his label Atlantic Records seemingly trying to squeeze every dollar out of that cash machine. If you saw my review of Ugly is Beautiful, which featured this cursed image as the thumbnail, then you know that I wasn't crazy about the overall technique that he used. A lot of the songs felt a little too safe and samey, and unfortunately, this album feels even more sanitized, and I didn't think it was gonna be that way based on the lead single. Oliver Tree is smart enough to know when the meme needs to be shaken up in order to inject some new life and humor into it. He retired the character of Turbo that we saw all throughout Ugly is Beautiful, the Windbreaker guy, and now we have a mullet-wearing cowboy. And it's funny, don't get me wrong, and I've enjoyed the visuals that go along with it, and I love how outlandish he is. You just never know if he's being surrealist or on the nose or if it's just all a joke and a facade who really knows at the end of the day but the music is starting to suffer from this immense amount of repetition just rinse and repeat the songs pretty much all sound identical it's always unfortunate when one of your own songs kind of summarizes the overarching problem with your music and he says it on track two if this is it then it's a swing and a miss and all he really serves up is these quick slightly under three minute pop rock songs that have a catchy melody but they use the same one and it's recycled and they occasionally add in some trap percussion or maybe there's an acoustic guitar being strummed on top of it and his vocal cadence is almost exactly on par with what he performed on the previous song. If that's all you want then great! I've got an album for you that's got about 13 songs that feel very very samey and it's not that they're bad or awful. There are fun moments in there. It's just that it feels rushed. I don't know how else to describe it other than it feels like a contractual obligation. Like Atlantic said, hey, you're popping off on social media everywhere. Your music videos are huge. Let's do another album right now. I hinted at this earlier, but I initially had much higher expectations for this record after hearing Cowboys Don't Cry. That track is ridiculously catchy. I love it. It reminds me of Cage the Elephant meets his own personality. It's kind of funny. It's very catchy. The bridge is just kind of soothing in an odd way, and I also appreciated the follow-up single Freaks and Geeks, which continued the theme of kind of being this outcast, but it still does it in a way that doesn't feel force-fed. I should have let my initial fears be a little bit more present in my mind, because Life Goes On, a song that popped off on TikTok and other platforms, is aggressively annoying. Like, it's a song that I cannot fucking stand. But it's something that he put out on the deluxe edition. I knew it was riding the wave and he was finding success, so maybe they'll check out his other stuff. It seems like he kind of went the opposite route and just kind of watered down the other material to bend more to that audience. I really like what Oliver Tree is trying to do. It's just unfortunate that he's not really connecting the punches. Even on tracks that try to be funny, like cigarettes, it just comes off as kind of edgy humor that I feel like I'm supposed to be laughing at, but I didn't even get a chuckle. Balloon Boy floats off to space without leaving an impression. Playing with fire has a kind of odd hip-hop cadence to it that doesn't really match the flow of the song, and something like Suitcase Full of Cash that's trying very hard to be cheeky, kind of like a modern Bonnie and Clyde, it just kind of falls flat on its face. I do like Swing and a Miss. It's a catchy song that has a very 90s Oasis thing going on, and it does feel a bit overly familiar, but the point I'm getting to is that all of the songs that got a music video are the ones that were put out as singles for a reason. They're easily the best on the record. I like some of the ideas on Doormat. It's kind of funny. It's he talks about being walked over, and Things We Used to Do actually gets in tune with its emotions to the point where it genuinely feels sincere, but then we have to talk about the worst song on the entire album. Something so lazy, it's just the epitome of cringe at this point because so many people have done this. It's California. Wow, this song is really bad. It's so monotonous. It's just like this Bob Dylan meets Oliver Tree meets somebody just spitting the exact same recycled garbage right back into your face about, oh, I moved to California. I'm in California. Bury me here when I die. It's just insufferably lazy. Walking away from Cowboy Tears, I feel a whole lot of nothing. 
It's this empty void. I don't want to see Oliver Tree go down this route of where he has a couple of catchy singles that are bangers and then the rest of the album is just filler. This album is exactly that. It's not even 35 minutes long. It's 13 tracks and the majority of those go by without a care. I'm going to give this album a light two and a half out of five. What did you guys think about Cowboy Tears? Did it leave more of an impression with you or are you more on the same page? Let me know your take in the comments section. Please hit that like button and subscribe for the love of music. If there's other albums you want me to review, then let me know with a comment and check out more videos on screen right now. And I'll be back soon with more on ARTV.